Um, welcome. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about uh, Gradebook and Blackboard. Now, um, what's on the PowerPoint is just kind of the basic step-by-step. -step. What I really need you to do is to open up that, your own shell, looking at a course. What I want to do is go over some of the basics of it. Once I finish those, then we're going to have you look at your courses and see what are some of the options. I want to actually pull up one of my courses. I have done a few different things based on which course it is, especially if you have a course that has labs. And when you have a course that has labs, then you want to make sure that you ensure how much are those labs worth. You never want someone to pass a course because they did well in the labs, when maybe in the, in the lecture and the assessments in the classroom they did not do well. And to me, that's the ideal place to put in like a weighted grading system. I do have some classes that are just strictly points. They uh, tally those points. I have it set up very basically where if I have uh, 100 points um, and I, it really averages out to what I want the course to look like. So keep that one in mind is think about the course that you're teaching and how exactly you're going to put this into Blackboard. Now in the very first um, slide that I have is when you go to Blackboard and in the toolbar you go down to the Grade Center. Now, if you've ever done anything on Blackboard where a student has done an assignment, maybe you've set up a test, maybe you've set up some sort of paper, if you've ever clicked on Needs Grading, it will show you what needs grading. You can set up a few additional things for that, but that's really more for if you have tests that are within Blackboard. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't have a test on Blackboard if you teach a class face-to-face. An option you have is maybe you decided, you know what, I'm going to do a test on Blackboard, but, I, but my class is face-to-face. -face. That's easy. You put in a request for laptops to be dropped off in your classroom before the class. You have uh, each student take a, uh, a laptop. They open it. You have them log into Blackboard. You have them take the test. When they're done, they log out. Done. All of your grading is done on Blackboard. Who do you request those notebooks from? Um, through audiovisual. And that's on the uh, Triton portal. Okay. And so that's kind of the nice thing is that, you know, there are a few computer labs on campus, mm -hmm. but they're, they're kind of a hot commodity and you can't always get into them. And the only really way that you can is if you schedule them way in advance. I'll give you my example as I teach a class next semester in which there are, I have to have specific IP addresses, so I have to use a, an actual classroom. I can't have a laptop because the IP addresses are all different. And so I have those already booked for next semester. So that's, you got to, with something like that, you kind of have to plan ahead. If you're thinking, I want that computer lab, think about that ahead of time. But that, you know, this kind of gives you some options because I've had a lot of people say to me, I'd love to be able to do some things on Blackboard. And so it's kind of like you got to pick and choose what do you want to start with. Um, giving a quiz, giving a, um, a test is always a good start, especially because you can do it in the classroom. You can watch them as they're doing it. You can make sure that they everything is, um, you know, no cheating, being maintained. When you're teaching an online course, the expectation is always that a student has every ability to spread everything out on a desk as they're starting to take that test. And what I've learned in the very beginning, I was so um, concerned about cheating. And as time went on, I realized I need to focus back on what I need them to know. And the bottom line is, for some of the classes, they will have their books open. They will have their notes open. There are some, like I know the math department has uh, testing that they do, and you have to uh, go through the webcam where they will watch you to make sure that you are not. But I teach also, I teach in the radiology program, but I also teach in the psychology department. And I fully acknowledge the fact that I expect you to have everything out. I'm more interested in them understanding the concepts than I am having them memorize something. And that's where you have to kind of think about that when you're, when you're thinking about whether or not to use gradebook. Now, if you have a class and you want to, that you do want them not to use anything else, it's a perfect opportunity. You get to monitor it just like any other test. You stand in the back of the room so you can see all the screens. You have, you set up so they log in, they take the test, 
you're done. No paper, everything is electronic. Now, the one nice thing about Gradebook is this, is that everything is contained within there. Ever since I've been using this, I never have a student ask me about grades. Never. Because it's all there for them to see. In fact, if anything, they become a little bit more obsessive with it. Well, I missed a point. You missed a point. I have 10, you have 9. <laughs> it's those kinds of things. And in a way, I'm happy about that because now they're taking on the responsibility, not me. So for this first one, what I want you to do is I want you to go to the full grade center. So in the drop-down box on the toolbar to the left where it says Full Grade Center. And so when you get to Full Grade Center, you should see this on the screen. It will actually say Grade Center, Full Grade Center. Now when you look at this, if you're looking at a previous class or a current class, you should see all the students' names listed on there. Now one of the other things is, is you'll see this toolbar which has uh, we'll have a list of all of the things that you have in there if you've ever used this for black, um, grading, where maybe you have a quiz, maybe you have a test, everything is aligned right there. The nice part about it is that if you add anything to this toolbar, there are arrows that are right next to this, ooh, darn it, I knew it was going to do that, <laughs> next to that where is a drop-down box. And that drop-down box allows you to make some changes without really changing the overall thing. So this is kind of um, an idea of what it's going to look like when it first comes up. When you first get a new shell in the semester, this is what shows up. If you want to copy a course, which is gr uh, the best idea, is in this will, uh, everything from that one class will be transferred over here. The first thing I do in a grade book is I hide the student ID. It means nothing. It means nothing. You really need to know their name, not their, no one, I, we can barely remember our own numbers, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing is availability. I hide availability unless you're doing an online course where you're planning on logging in and meeting with students. There's no reason to have availability because you're not going to be chatting with students unless it's a fully online course. So I hide this one. This is another one. Now there's two other things that show up. One is a weighted total and one is a total with a green uh, checkbox. Those two things will always show up. And so those are the two different things that we're going to be focusing on today. So I talked a little bit about needs grading. This would be the screen that will show up. If you had anything to grade, it would list it all down there. I have some courses where I have uh, modules or maybe there's a quiz, maybe there's a paper, maybe there's a test, and it will be labeled all together. And you can actually create a way in which you can look and find that particular item. When I grade for an online course, I can read all of my papers at one time. Or I can grade all the tests at one time. That's kind of the nice thing about um, needs grading. So the total. This is the most basic way to do the grade book, and that would be just to add every assessment that you have, quiz, test, maybe a paper, um, maybe you've given somebody credit for a worksheet, whatever you use to grade in your class. It can all go to a total. So what that means is you have to determine, is your paper worth um, 10 points, 20 points, those are the kind of things you kind of need to think about ahead of time. When you're looking at your grade book, how many quizzes am I going to give? How many tests am I going to give? How many papers? Whatever it is that you use towards a grade, you kind of have to know that at the beginning of the semester. It doesn't mean that you can't change it, but it's really helpful just to have it all laid out in front of you. So that's where the total is going to come in. So. Regarding um, the total, what we're going to do in, in this case, if you go to your grade book and find the box that says total with the green check mark, find that one. And on the right hand side, there is an arrow with like a little drop down. Click on that and you're going to see all of these same different options. You're going to see quick column information, edit column information, column statistics. Uh, sort ascending, sort descending. A lot of times 
when um, I hit those, it's usually by mistake. You're like, oh, I hit that one. So then you got to go back. So if you ever looked at it, you thought, this is not alphabetical. Somewhere along the line, when you were hitting them, you probably hit. I do that all the time. So just go to do that. The last one on here says hide from instructor view. So for instance, those ones that I said availability, ID, um, I have some classes that have labs, they have extra ones. I hide it because for me, I want my grade book straightforward, simple, none of the extra stuff. Because mm -hmm. as you're starting to scroll across the screen, every uh, column that you have that is not usable is just in the way. So quick column information just kind of allows you to look at things quickly. What's most important for you in the beginning is edit column information. And by edit column information, that will allow you to change everything within that grading system. So that's what we're going to do um, first when we work. We're going to look at the edit column information. So now I know this is small, but I want you to click on it where it says edit column information because you're going to actually get to see the screen. So wherever you see that total, check marks, and so click on edit. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to be, because what you, what, I, what you see on the screen is, wow, it's really small. So first thing at the top, it gives it a name. Now, maybe instead of saying total, you want to say total points. Total, maybe you want to call it something different. You have the ability just to put your cursor over there and change it. The next thing that you have is it says grade center name. What I try to do is I try to keep those consistent. What that means is as you're looking at those columns, as you're looking at the grade center name, when a student goes to check their grades and they go under my grades, you want those two names to stay the same. You don't want something different. So usually what I do is whatever's in the column name, that's the same thing that I put in the grade center name, just for consistency. For the description, it gives you an unweighted sum of all grades for a user. So it just totals everything up. You have 10 quizzes. They're all worth 10 points. Now you got 100. And it will give you a running tally of that. And I'll show you where that one is going to be found as well. Now, as you come down a little bit further, it has some options here for a few uh, additional things. Um, as far as display, I'm going to go on to the next one. But if you just wanted to enter total or you wanted to change something with that, you could leave everything else the same and just hit submit. Biggest thing when you're doing the gradebook is remind yourself after you do everything, hit submit. Mm -hmm. if, you clear, if you back out of it, nothing you did will be saved. So that submit button needs to happen often. I submit, submit, submit. <laughs> just to make sure that you're, it's going to stay there. So that's kind of the top part of that edit total column. Um, yes. Okay. So now a little bit further, stay on the same screen that you're on. A little bit further down, it says select columns. So let's say that you do um, 10 things in the class. And all of a sudden, you, you decide, you know what? Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use that towards a grade. I'm gonna throw that one out. There was um, that one. I decided that the students were not prepared. The scores were not that great. I'm gonna toss it. What you can do is you can actually select columns, uh, columns and cat categories, or select all. So you kind of have a choice. If you're looking at your grades and you've decided you want these 10 things, but now you've kind of changed your mind, you kind of you can do it either way. The nice part about all grade columns, personally, I everything that I have listed on there has a grade. It just makes it easier. It's a total of everything that you have listed in the grade book. Now, it even gives you the option to calculate as a running total. If you want that total to constantly give that student an updated grade, you have to click yes. Because if you don't click yes on this, then what's going to happen is the calculation is not going to add things up consistently. And a student will be thinking, oh my gosh, I'm failing. 
oh, I'm passing, and it's, ne it's never going to be what you want it to. So you have to make sure that calculate as a running total is marked. Because uh, that one, will, although you'll figure it out pretty quickly when you're starting to look at some of the totals and think, well, this doesn't seem right. And it's because it's the actual grade that they're showing is always going to be less. And every student will be emailing you saying, what's happened to my grade? And really, it's just a matter of you just need to go back and, and click on that one. The bottom part of that screen that you're looking at says options. Now, this is another one that um, when you're looking at something, it says include this column in the grade center calculation. Well, remember, the top of that screen said total. So for this one, you everything that you add to it, you click yes. Always click yes for that one. Show this column to the students. I always put yes, because I, I'm a believer of just putting in there what I'm going to use. If I'm not going to use it, uh, leave it off. I want the students to see everything. The last thing is uh, show statistics, average, and medium for this column to students in my grades. Now, this is one of those, as a default, it shows up as no. And what I have found is, for me, it doesn't help the other students if they see the average of the median of the rest of the class. I want the student to focus on them. I don't want it to be a competition of everybody else in the classroom. Oh, look at every student grade. I'm not doing so good. Not that, you know, in some cases, some students do need that, but I kind of feel like with the grades that they have, why should they know about everybody else's? Really, you know, we're in, we're in a, um, a, an institution where we're trying to get students to be self-motivated, do their own thing. I can't have them worrying about the rest of the class. So for me personally, I don't use this. As far as letting the students see, I do use this, the, the stats portion of it, but that's for my own um, assessment. So now the other thing is, uh, on that screen, it gives you the option of a primary display and a secondary display. You should be able to see that on a couple different options that you have, especially for the total column. Now, for the primary display, if you click on that drop down, what do you see? We're what kind? Still, we're still in total column. Mm -hmm. We're still in edit column. Yeah. We're still in edit column information. So, what do you, what do we see in that? Score, letter, text, percentage. So, score, complete. letter, text, complete, incomplete. Um, this is where you kind of have to decide what you want the students or how you grade. We know, are you, did you get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what we try to do here is we try to make sure that whatever you're using in your syllabus that you're using um, according to this. Now, as far as a score is concerned, what that will mean is that that running to points will be added up in a sum. Now, the, and remember, this is the total. So do you want that to be a score? Do you want that to be a percentile? Personally, for me, I like to put it up as a percentile. Because in that way, if you have 100 points, and while it's an easy way to calculate what your grade is, but for the students, it means much more to see that they're getting an 89% as opposed to a 95%. So that kind of gives you an idea of something um, along those lines. For total, now, the other options, one of them was incomplete, complete. If you set up a test or you set up a worksheet that they have to bring into the class, it's either complete or incomplete, but it doesn't really add to the total, you could do that. You know, I think a lot of times you, you have to reflect on what are you using in the classroom for grades. You have to figure out what, what it is that you want to use this for. There's a secondary display, which says this display option is shown in the grade center only. So what this is, is this is kind of a secondary drop-down box. Now, I've used this for a couple different um, things myself, where I've used it for um, a percentage. Sometimes I make that one a percentage. Maybe I make it a text. Sometimes for me, as I'm looking through some of the grades, I'm trying to figure out you know, maybe I want to set it up so that it actually gives them the current grade that they have. And so 
play with that one. See with which one works best. So for my homeworks and quizzes, I just use the primary display for score. Yeah. But for my uh, exams, I use primary display score, and then secondary display, I choose percentage. Yes. So then yes. I see both. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then that way, you're, you're showing them what they need to see. Um, you know, it's hard because for some, I know some of the things that we put in there, um, you know, this is for the total column. And so this is set up a little bit differently. Um, but absolutely for the test, you know, if your test is 150 points, the students don't understand necessarily well, what's my grade. Where when you show them however many points that they got and it's a percentile, that percentile means a lot more to them than they got 130 points mm -hmm. out of 150. Mm -hmm. there's, there's kind of a disconnect with being able, to, being able to tabulate it, just from what I've seen anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you got the total column set up. And now what I want you to do is I want you to, in the very bottom, it, I will, unless you didn't make any changes, you can either cancel or you can either submit at the very bottom. Go back. And let's let, go back to looking at the full grade center. Now, one of the big things that people decide is they put everything in, they change their mind, maybe they think to themselves, oh gosh, I, I really don't like the order in which everything is listed. Now, I'm kind of type A, Mary knows me. I like everything, each class that happens, I have all my grades in that order. There are some people that put all of the tests together. They put all the quizzes together. I prefer the week by week. Uh, last week we had a quiz, I list it. Next is a test, I list it. Think about what is user friendly for you. If you go under column organization, you can rearrange those tests and scores. And to me, out of all, there's a lot of different um, options that you have on here, but to me, one of the most important is column organization. So if you go to Manage and the Grade Center, and you click on the um, on that drop-down box, oops, one too many. Um, go to Column Organization. Click and highlight on Column Organization. So click on that one, and yep, click on that. Okay, and so you're going to see a screen that looks something like this. And what you need to do here is, this is another one of those where it says last name, first name is frozen. You cannot hide those. The other things, the user ID, the student ID, last access and availability, personally, I hide them. I don't need to see them. Occasionally, if I'm concerned about somebody who I don't feel is checking Blackboard, I may click on last access. Because if you've asked um, all of your students to check Blackboard, you've posted a video for them to watch, you've changed some sort of assignment, I want to know when they last logged into Blackboard. And that's the easiest way to see it is the last access. And I've had students say to me, oh, um, no, I've been checking Blackboard. And I've said to them, oh, please don't do this. You know this is electronic. And the thing that I don't think they understand is when they log into Blackboard, if they have three classes and they only look at two and not all three, until they log into this class will that last access show up. They may have gone on Blackboard, but they didn't log into this class. Mm -hmm. And that's always kind of one of those where, like, no, no, I checked Blackboard. And you're like, Okay, come with me. Here we go, last access. And then all of a sudden, like, oh. I always tell them, please don't do it. This is technology. They know everything. They know when you log in, everything. Now, as far as the um, different tests, the bottom portion here is where every test that you have would be listed, or quiz, or whatever you did. Now, you can kind of see a, um, a box just a little bit to the left of the weighted column that has kind of a cross on it. If you click, if you highlight that, you're able to then move things around. So maybe this is what I needed to know. So maybe you decided, you know what? Um, gosh, I gave a quiz last week, but I, you know what? I, I changed, I changed my mind. I'm gonna do something different. And then all of a sudden now you're like, oh my gosh, that was in a different order. If you just hover over that, you can move them all over the place. 
She's like going, there you go. So just move them. So just move it. Make it in an order that works for you. Maybe all of a sudden you're going along good. You get to midterm. You're like, this, oh, I had I to move that thing. Or maybe you um, decide. I mean, people kind of go back and forth with their letter grade. Trying to figure out, should I put it at the very front of the grade center? Should I put it at the very back? I have changed my mind more times on that one because when I look at somebody's name and the total, I want that to be as close to their name in the grade center as possible. When I look at grades, I want their name, I want their grade, I want all of that to come up in one screen because by the time I scroll all the way to the end, now I'm like, okay, which student was that? Okay, you're going back. So think about that as far as placement of weighted total, total, ta whatever. Maybe you have, you want to put in just a grade. Maybe um, you have it set up where you want to be able to enter your own grades. You can do that too. Then you would just put in a column that would just say text. I do that all the time where sometimes I change my mind. I don't want to necessarily, I want them to see a percentile. I don't necessarily want to put the actual letter grade because it just to be not enough space. So sometimes I just do my own column. So kind of think about whatever works for that. Now the same thing with this one. If you start to move all of your things within the grade book, the biggest thing is you have to hit submit. There's another one of those submits in your right corner. If you rearrange things and you don't hit submit, it won't save it. You only do it once. Because then after you do it, you're like, oh, I did not hit submit. And then you go back. OK, next one I want to talk about is a weighted total. Weighted total means that you have certain things that you've given specific uh, percentage values to. Not everything is equal. Now, the total grade center is I have one of those classes where I've used the total. And there's no lab to it. It's a pretty straightforward, it's a true two-credit class. I have a running tally. That's how we do grades with that class. I have another class that has lab component. And that's where I weight things. And when you weight things, it'll show up here as a weighted total. The same thing's going to show up where you have the option of a primary and a secondary display. So maybe you want to put a percentage. Maybe you want to put a score. You can choose. You don't have to put two. They list a primary display and a secondary display. Personally, I pick one. Otherwise, it gets very crowded in that, in that small little space usually the very first one. Um, again, it's kind of one of those personal preferences to see what you what you would like to, um, to do with that one. Same thing, I got a submit button over here. I've left my column name the same. I want to use a percentage. So now is the next thing. If you have a class that you already taught or that you are currently teaching, what you'll see over here to the left-hand side is everything that you have listed in gradebook. So maybe you've got 10 quizzes, you've got a couple of tests, you've got papers. When you're looking at this weighted column, you will see there's columns to select. So on your screens, I should have said this before. Did you go to weighted column? OK, good. I knew you guys were already ahead of me. All right, so I go to weighted column. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight whatever it is that I want to move over into the weighted section. Now, I don't need to move my total over. I just need to move over something that has a point or a, uh, a value to it that I want to use towards the grade. So I'm going to highlight this. Oop, I knew it was going to happen. I got too close. I'm going to highlight that one. And then there's an arrow on the very top that I'm going to hit. And that arrow will move this over to this side. So maybe I've done uh, 12 quizzes, but I only want to count 10. I'm going to make sure that I count out which ones I want. And that's why when you are labeling your grade book, keep it simple. Quiz one, quiz two. To, if you start to put a lot of stuff in there, make sure it makes sense to you so that when you're trying to determine what you're going to set over here, that you leave it that way. Now, they have categories to select. I don't use that. 
I keep it it's as simple as I can. This is what I'm grading them on. As far as categories that I'm looking at, um, I try to keep it simple. And sometimes when you label things assignment or survey or test or discussion or blog, that's one more link that will show up. I'm kind of a keep it simple. Whatever is here in this column, I'm going to pick from there and I'm going to choose what I want to move over. Yes. So I was working in DTL for a few years and actually I was using categories and then I had an option to choose like drop the lowest item within this category. Yes. Is there a similar feature? That's pretty much what I came to as. Oh, to see if there was something that you could do similar to that similar? one? To be honest with you, I don't know. I, I'd have to look at it a little bit further, only because for me, I've never, um, I've, I know that people have done that, um, and it's hard because not every, it will not fall, fall under the same column for everyone, which one is their low score. So, so D2L was able to pick just right away. Yes, because yes. Because I do give a, a quiz for every single chapter, but then at the right. end of the semester, I would, the students love that. Like, I'm going to drop your lowest quiz. Right, and right. And D2L would do it for me automatically. And mm -hmm. I was wondering if there was a similar feature. Yeah, you know what? I don't use that, um, but we can absolutely take a look. We can, I know that there's yes. a lot of videos and links that will take you to, okay. to making, with something like that, even more detailed. So we'll definitely take a look at that, okay? So um, the other thing is, too, when you have this coming over here, it defaults as a running total. So kind of the same thing, too. Even if you have 10 things listed on there and it says running total, it will continually update it even though things are of a different weight. I think that's important, too, because even though you know that maybe a test is coming up and it's of more value than what is... Uh, done previously, it still keeps that grade current. You know, students are constantly asking, what's my grade, what's my grade? This keeps it current. I think that's a, a huge benefit to having the weighted, if that's what you uh, choose to do. And then there's my submit. I have a question. Yes. About that. Like, I, I have my students do these projects every week, and, yeah. and I collect it three times. So, like, the first time it's worth 80 points, the second time it's worth 140 points. Okay. How do I, is that something that I would wait to show them, like if they got 80 out of 80 points, that they got an A? I mean, I'm not so sure you, So you, if you collect something three times, and each one of those times you get a specific um, point value to, I would suggest you list it three times in Blackboard. The first column you said was worth 80. The next one is worth 140. The next one is worth... And so figured it out. Okay, <laughs> but but I mean, at least that way, the, the problem is, is since you have them turn it in three times, you know, I've had people say to me, well, I have them turn it in uh, to be looked at, and then it, they go back and they do more work on it. It's really hard to go back and make adjustments on a grade. It's best just to say, it's due this day, it's worth that many points. Put a second column in, it's due. Uh, next week, 140 points, a second column, third column. Every time you collect it and give a grade, I would make a uh, separate column for it. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. It's just that, uh, you know, when you're used to everything being worth 100 points, yes. then they're trying to figure out what their grade is because yes. it's not like everything is not 100 Well, and by, by you putting that in, you can put the percentage in, and it will actually show them what the percentage is. If you'd rather, if you're saying that if you, you have it worth 80 points and they're having some difficulties determining what it is, when you set that up, you could set it up so it shows us a percentile. So then they'll know exactly what, what that is. Because I'm sure if you said uh, they got 70 out of 80, they'd have a harder time with that as opposed to you saying that they got 85% on something. Yeah. It would still be able to keep the running total, but for that particular grade, it would tell them exactly you might give them a couple options. You might actually say in that for the primary, you may say total. For the secondary, you may say percentile. Because now they're, they know how many points that they have, but now in the second column, it actually tells them what the percentage of that is. So you can kind of work um, along that. Now, um, I took a test and I moved it over and I arrowed it over to this side. Every time you move something over, 
you have to assign it a percentile. So if I had 10 of these tests, then I need to make sure that it adds up to 100%. I'd make them all 10%. Maybe I want worksheets to be worth 5%. There's 10 of them. I need to make sure that however many that I have, maybe um, if I have 10 of them and I want it worth 10%, I'm going to make each worksheet worth 1%. The one thing that people have said to me is, well, what happens if I start the semester and I have, and I say I'm going to do 10 quizzes, but I only do eight? All you need to do is you need to go back into this. You need to locate your quizzes. You need to get rid of whatever ones you didn't do. You need to now look at eight, and then whatever percentile you added, you need to adjust it. And so that's kind of the nice part is that, you know, it doesn't mean that just because you entered it that you're stuck with those the way it is, especially for weighted. You can go back in and change it. You thought you were going to do 10, but oh, it just it, it didn't work. Something happened where now you have nine or now you have eight. You can go back in there and then readjust those columns only as long as it uh, adds up to 100. Okay. All right. Now, the same so thing. Oh, I've got a question. So I don't normally use gradebook at all. Okay. Um, I teach an English class. Okay. Five essays. Two of them are for uh, MLA research. Those okay. are weighted as 20% of these. Okay. The other three are weighted as 10%. So okay. So 70% of their grade are those essays. Okay. So I don't really care that they see the other 10%. They like to have their, their essay grades posted. Sure. Right? Yep. So it's 70% of their total, but it still needs to add up to 100%. In, um, yes. So that means whatever, what it, what's the extra 30%? Uh, participation would be one, attendance is another, and okay. then I hand out miscellaneous okay. worksheets and in-class exercises that we do. We do poetry evaluations, stuff like that. So the biggest thing with that is you need to come up with though that extra 30% somewhere on the column. Okay. So if you have attendance, you could um, make an attendance column, um, maybe a participation column, making sure that now does participation count every week? It does. It does. Okay. And so I've had some people say to me that at participation, they only have uh, maybe half of the class. So maybe eight of the 15-week course has participation. They actually list eight columns, each one is dated, they do participation on that particular day. The one thing I would tell you about that is the very first time you do it, you'll be like, oh my god, I gotta do eight of them? But the beauty of it is this, the next time you teach that course, you're gonna copy it in there and you're done. There is no adding another, whatever you do, the initial grade book that you show up with and that you enter and that you spend an enormous amount of time with, will stay there and then you just copy it for the next semester. Okay. So even if you did decide you want to do, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 worksheets or something and to, that equates to that 30%, you can add several columns to it. It's just going to be a kind of a little bit of a pain the first time. Right. After that, it'll be easy. After that, it will be easy. Okay. okay. So when you're transferring the columns, since it's like SA1, SA2, SA3, SA4, or whatever. So that's where I transferred over, and that's where I put the percentages in. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And so the last thing on the weighted is similar to what you saw previously, where it says include this column in the grade center calculations, um, making sure you show this column to students. The default always shows up like that. So it's really not really once you figure out your percentiles, and where things are within that grade book, the default stays where it is. I just hit submit. There isn't anything, um, anything any differently. Of course, I want it um, to be included in the grade center. Of course, I want the students to see it. The stats part of it, um, like I said, I look at individual things, but the students don't necessarily need to see that. So that's something to think about too, in regards to, um, in regards to this. So. That's it for kind of going through the basics of it. 
Um, what I'd like to ask you do is, if you have a course or you have a previous one, is for you to go into the weighted. And if you have uh, several exams that are already there, try to change some of those percentiles just for some practice, just to look at what it means to change those numbers. When you are adding things to the weighted column, the biggest thing is you need to make sure you click on each box. And once you hit, um, you enter your number, you need to now move your cursor to the next box mm -hmm. in order for it to actually tabulate to that 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm actually gonna pull up one of my classes and this is where I'm gonna hit the stop button, maybe.